What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna talk about the Arendelle 1723 1S subwoofer. A few weeks ago I reviewed its little brother and a lot of you guys asked about the larger 1723 1S in that video. You guys were almost just about as curious as I was about this bad boy and I don't blame you. On paper, it's quite unique. Hell, in real life, it's quite unique. We'll talk about that in just a second. First and foremost, we'll do this review the same way we generally do. I'll tell you about some specs and standout features. I'll throw the main ones on screen. I'll tell you a little bit about what it sounds like. We'll do some comparisons and then we'll wrap it up. So, what makes this thing have your attention and my attention? Why are we curious about this? There's so many subwoofers out there. It's gonna be its primary standout feature and that's gonna be the size of the driver. It's a 13.8 inch driver. Now, normally, you know, we'll see like a lot of like, I, th I guess, you know, 12s are probably the most common, I would say. A lot of companies got a 12 inch, 500 watt, under thousand dollar solution. They're great, they perform very well. This is quite a bit larger at 13.8 inches. I'll throw some pictures on screen with this next to a few other subs so you can see how much larger a 13.8 inch driver is. It is big, guys. It is big. Um, the cool thing, however, though, is because Arendelle makes their drivers side firing, as you can see on the screen behind me, the front baffle is going to be fairly slim on the subwoofer. I was saying narrow previously in another take of this video, and I stumbled over it so many times. I'm just saying slim from now on, guys. The front baffle is slim. It looks good. It's not going to be as dominating in the room as it would be if it had a more, I guess you could say, traditional orientation being, you know, if it were front firing, it'd have a really wide front, not really wide, but it'd have a much wider front baffle at least. So that's quite cool, I think. And that those are the two things that really got my attention. That's why I wanted to review this. One, I was curious, what could a 13.8 inch driver do? And two, the fact that it was side firing and didn't look massive in the room is another thing that got my attention because my room isn't very big. A huge subwoofer in my room would look quite silly. My room's only 10 feet wide, 12 feet deep, and has nine foot ceilings. Anyhow, some other standout features are gonna be the awesome attention to detail. Being an Arendelle product, we get a high density fiberboard cabinet. We get the logos on the bottom of the feet, which is pretty cool. We have the chassis mounted RCAs around back. We have the same screen and knob combination uh, that we saw on the 1961 1S to make all of our adjustments, except on the 1723, we get a slightly larger screen, and that screen is 180 degree rotatable. So if you're hunched over making your adjustments, the screen will be in the correct orientation. There's also a cell phone app. I got to test a beta version of it and I thought it was very intuitive. It was appealing to look at and everything did work quite well. Um, I don't know when you're watching this video. By the time you watch this video, they, the app might be out. If when you're watching this video, this app isn't out yet, I would say based on what I saw in the beta, it should be coming very soon. It did look mostly finished to me. Anyhow, what else do we have? We have a few more connection options around back like XLR that the 1961 1S didn't have. And some other standout features. Ah, the finish. You guys know Nemo Propaganda does not like vinyl and this doesn't even come in vinyl. It's not even an option. Paint only. I have the matte black here. The matte black is a little bit cheaper and I recommend you save the money and go for the matte black because it looks so good. It looks so good that I emailed Arendelle about the finish and I told them, guys, this finish is beautiful. And what they shared with me is something I found quite impressive. They said the finish is actually um, a multi-stage finish that is sanded by hand in between coats. And I thought that was pretty cool. I will say it, when you handle this, your fingers will leave some marks on it. Wipe them off right away. I got a little bit lazy and I left some handprints on this and I was still able to get them out, but I could tell they were, I had to do like a little bit more rubbing with the microfiber than usual. And I do think if you leave like handprints on it for a long time, maybe like a year, maybe, it might absorb into the finish. So do be mindful of that. Wipe it down after you put it in its position and it should stay looking beautiful for years and years and years. So I think that is mostly gonna be it for the standout features. Let me think real quick here. Yeah, what does it sound like? So, essentially what we've got going on here compared to its smaller brother 1961, I thought the 1723 1S was simply gonna sound like a larger 1961, but that wasn't the case. We got a subwoofer now with the 1723 that is quite a bit more refined, has a little bit more bass detail and fidelity. 
a little bit better base texture. It still has that same aggressive, powerful, and strong attack that the 1961 1S has, but it's so much more refined in the 1723 1S, it doesn't call any of your attention to it, and instead you can just sit back and enjoy the music or movie without focusing critically on the bass. The base of the 1961 1S more came from the front of the soundstage. With the 1723S, it's more of a high-end sound and more of a high-end experience. And what I mean by that, the bass is more coming from an ink black background, which is a pretty cool experience if you've never experienced a subwoofer system like that before. So, uh, oh, there's one thing I actually do want to touch on before I move on. So, transient response. Um, some of you guys might think like, hey, this is a pretty big subwoofer with a 13.8 inch driver, like, aren't like small subwoofers like 8s and 10s like really quick and like larger subwoofers kind of slow? No, it doesn't really work that way. There are other factors at play here. And I'll give you a little bit of an example to illustrate this. And just before I get into that example, the transient response of the 1723-1S is fantastic. Um, in my car, I have an eight inch subwoofer. You might think the eight inch subwoofer in my car is gonna have better or quicker transient response than the much larger driver of the 1723, and you would be wrong for thinking that. Why is the eight inch in my car not as quick? It's quite good, it's quite expensive. Um, it's getting quality power and tons of it. It has a custom cabinet built specifically for it. But in my car, I'm feeding that subwoofer tons of power. It's a small subwoofer and it has to move like hell to produce the SPL output that I like in car audio. That subwoofer is moving in and out so much how can you expect it to have amazing transient response? Where a larger subwoofer like the Arendelle 1723-1S, to match the same output I'm getting from my eight inch at just max SPL, the 1723 is just barely gonna be moving. Which one do you think would have the faster transient response? The larger driver, of course. Now, that's not to say that a larger driver will always have faster transient response. Um, Oftentimes, a small inch driver will, can have faster and will have faster, faster transient response. Um, either gonna have lighter weight moving mass and just all kinds of things that will aid in that. But don't assume smaller drivers always have better transient response than larger drivers. And also don't assume, because I used a car audio example, I'm comparing the 19, I'm sorry, the 1723-1S to a sloppy subwoofer. The subwoofer I have in my car is quite good and sounds absolutely fantastic. And if you want me to sit here and compare it to a home audio subwoofer, I will. Um, if we compare it to something like, let's see here, what makes good sense? What's a smaller subwoofer that makes good sense? The Emotiva RS11. Uh, that's a fantastic subwoofer and it's, not similarly priced, but it's, it's within a few hundred dollars. Um, it is a ported subwoofer, but it does come with a foam plug to seal it. So for the sake of this comparison, I will be talking about the Emotiva RS11 in sealed mode. The 1723-1S is 13.8 inches. The Emotiva RS11 is 11 inches. The 1723 has better transient response, better speed, better accuracy, more dynamic, all those things. So again, as you can see here, even in a home uh, audio example, the larger 1723-1S has quite good transient response. And I mention that again because I think some people may initially be concerned that the larger subwoofer may not have the speed, accuracy, or delicacy that they're looking for. Rest assured, it absolutely does. So, um, on this channel, we do mainly focus on subwoofer's performance with respect to two-channel music. So, I do think it's important to say that with the subwoofer facing the corner, in the position it's designed to be in. Um, when you're listening to music, the bass is gonna be slightly exaggerated, especially in those lower octaves. I found turning the driver 90 degrees, so, sorry, not the driver, turning the subwoofer 90 degrees so that the driver is facing me gave me more natural response for the bass with respect to music. Now, with the subwoofer in its correct orientation where the driver is facing the corner of the room, it was fantastic for movies, video games, and things like that. I recently downloaded and played the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. And for those of you that played it, um, they're, you know, whether you played it or not, look, there's these alien creatures called Reapers, and when they talk, their voice is deep. And I've played this game many, many times. When I was playing this game most recently, I had the 1723-1S, and when the Reaper spoke, my whole room rumbled. I did not know that much low-frequency information was in the mix of that game. So, 
Um, what else here? What else is important about this thing? What else should I tell you guys? The bass is quite composed. It is a high-end sound. It really is. Let's do some comparisons and then we'll wrap it up. So a lot of you guys probably want to know how it compares to something like the SVS SB3000. They're a few hundred dollars different in price. So I do think it's important to keep that in mind. Ultimately, I'm going to keep this really short and really simple. While it has been a while since I've had an SVS SB3000 in my room, and that subwoofer is fantastic, the 1723 1S is simply better at just about everything. There isn't a single category where the 1723 1S doesn't beat out the SVS SB3000. And look, it's a few hundred dollars more expensive, so that's no knock against the SVS SB3000. But if you were looking for an upgrade without going too much larger with respect to cabinet size, this might be a good option for you. Let's do some other comparisons. And the comparisons are gonna to start to get a little bit weird because again, remember, this is the largest driver I have reviewed on this channel. So I don't have any apples to apples comparisons, really. Even with the SVS SB3000, this is a few hundred dollars more expensive. So it's not a dead even comparison. Um, let's talk about the RHEL T9X. It's about, it's similar, it's more similar in price, but that comparison is almost a silly one. The Rel T9X, fantastic subwoofer. I love it to pieces. You guys know this. 10 inch driver, 300 watts RMS, class AB powered, quite good. But the cabinet, I mean, that's a small subwoofer compared to this guy. The comparison simply doesn't really make sense, but I'll do it very briefly for those of you that are very curious. The Rel T9X is an ultra sound quality focused design. That is its primary goal, and it is phenomenal on that. It does have world class bass fidelity, sound quality, transient response textures, and so on, and is unmatched in all of those categories. The 1723 1S is no slouch in any of those categories and performs quite admirably as well. So if you like sound quality, don't worry, this bad boy has it also. It's just not quite world-class like the Rel T9X is. Instead though, being a little bit larger, the 1723 is gonna give you exactly what a larger subwoofer should. A ridiculous amount more SPL, output, extension, authority, effortlessness, sense of scale. And this is why this comparison is so stupid. <laughs> this is so much larger, guys. Um, for those of you that have never compared like a smaller subwoofer to a larger subwoofer, you might not understand why it's so silly to do so. There's just something larger subwoofers can do that smaller ones can't. Sense of scale is one of them. Big dynamic swings is another one. Uh, strong forceful and impactful low frequency extension and output, deep bass, uh, and sense of scale if I didn't already say that. So let's move on from the silly comparison and enter another silly comparison, the Kev KC62. Just kidding, guys, that's ridiculous. Um, it, it, I'm not gonna do it. I don't care if they're similar in price. The Kev KC62, there's only one reason to buy that subwoofer. One, you can afford it, and two, you need something that small. That's the only reason, you sh if you can fit a larger subwoofer, if you don't need something that small, don't buy a Kev KC62, guys, that's ridiculous. I love that subwoofer, I think it's awesome, it's so cute, as like awesome low frequency extension for how small it is, but it's a compromise being so small, okay? If you can fit something larger, get something larger, all right? Anyhow, um, let's do some more realistic comparisons. The Rhythmic FVX12. If you're in the United States, that is a good option to consider. If you're outside of the United States, it's gonna be about the same price as the Arendelle 1723 1S or maybe more expensive because of freight costs. The Rhythmic FVX12 is a ported design, so it is quite different with that regard, but it is servo controlled. So it's transient response is quite quick and more in line with a sealed subwoofer. There is quite a big visual difference between the two. The Rhythmic FVX12 is quite a bit larger and nowhere near as good looking and just the fit and finish of the 1723, it, it just is better. And I love Rhythmic, I feel bad saying that, but it's true. The Rhythmic FVX12 that I have is a uh, vinyl finish. This is a painted finish, of course. The Rhythmic does come with an optional painted white finish that does add, I think, 150 or so to its price, however. The Rhythmic FVX12 is gonna have a little bit more effortlessness to its low frequency extension being a ported design. The 1723 1S is simply gonna take up less floor space while still offering up dominant amounts of bass. This comparison going beyond this does get a little bit silly because again, it's just so not apples to apples. While they're kind of in the same ballpark of price and they're both like very dominant with their low frequency extension and output, one's ported, one's sealed. Like 
I hope you guys are getting the point here. I just don't have the data points, nor do I think there's anything else in the market quite like this. So with that said, let's start to wrap this up. What you're getting in the 17231S is a subwoofer that is quite good. It has a high end sound. The bass is coming from the background. The bass is very strong, very powerful, and the attack is very aggressive, but still very controlled. As strong as the attack is, it doesn't draw its attention to itself. If you focus on the bass, of course, you can do that if you want to critically listen and focus on the bass. I do that sometimes. I enjoy it. But if you want to just kick back, listen to music, or watch a movie without having your attention drawn and your brain going, subwoofer, this is a fantastic option. Personally, I don't like it when that happens. I don't like it when my brain gets drawn to the bass and my brain goes, subwoofer. I like to just be immersed in the experience. I don't want to think, oh, amplifier, oh, dynamic swing, subwoofer going boom, boom, oh, speaker, top end treble, oh, effects. Like, I, I don't want to think about those things when I'm listening to music or when I'm watching a movie or playing a video game. I just want to be immersed in the experience. The 17231S is fantastic at doing that for me. Now, uh, one last thing I do want to touch on is like room size and like, will this be right for you or not? I don't know, okay? For music, uh, let's be clear. For music, I can tell you. For my room at least, 10 feet wide, 12 feet deep, nine foot ceilings, this is way too big, way too big. Um, 1961 1S would be a better option for me in a room this size for music only systems. Now, for mixed, systems, mixed system users or theater only system users, I've said this before, but I think it bears repeating. There is no limit to how much subwoofer you can have in a mixed system or in a theater only system. There is such a thing as too much subwoofer for a music system, but not for a theater or mixed system. The reason is subwoofers have a sweet spot and with music, music is not, it's just not as demanding as theater is. So you may not be in the subwoofer sweet spot if your subwoofer is quite large and your room is quite small. You'll barely have your gain turned up. The subwoofers only get 50 watts or so from the plate amp. It's just not really gonna be happy. In theater, we demand a ton of output from the subwoofer. So it's more likely to be in its sweet spot even if it's huge and your room is tiny. So whether you want two, three, four, 50, I don't know. If it's theater, mix system, I can't tell you what's gonna be right for you. One thing I did find interesting, I was reading the manual, and it's got some funny jokes in it too, which is pretty cool, but for dual 1723 1Ss, Arendelle recommends stacking them. They suggest you leave this in the corner of the room with the driver facing the corner and everything. You wanna make sure to leave something like eight centimeters, I think, between the driver and the wall, and simply stack the second one on top. Uh, in the manual, it said this gave uh, more SPL output um, stronger bass response and just they listed a ton of benefits so I think that's kind of cool I think that would be a super cool look and I think they might be onto something when I had dual rhythmic f12s here um, I did find that in this room stacking them one on top of the other did give me more output than having them side by side left and right I also found having them stacked on top of each other made them much easier to set up um, I had way less phase issues and things like that to deal with, and it was just way, way easier. Now, that's not to say a stereo pair left and right aren't gonna sound awesome. I'm just letting you know what they recommend for their manual. And with that said, I don't think I have much else to tell you about this subwoofer. It's awesome. I, I and have enjoyed it quite a bit, and I guess I can leave you with this. Arendell doesn't know this yet. I'm about to email them at the end of this video. I'm about to Thomas and stereo you real quick. I had a friend come over, uh, his name's Trent, and he loves theater. And he was like, what's this, what's this thing here, you know? Because you know, the, the 1723 and the 1961, you may not initially know it's a subwoofer right away um, if you're not like looking at the driver, for example. And I'm like, that's a subwoofer. He's like, I thought it was a subwoofer. Can I hear it? I said, of course you could hear it. I played it for him and his, I literally watched his jaw drop. He said, how much is it? I told him how much it was. And the next question he asked, is it for sale? And I said, look, it's, it's not, um, but I can buy it at the end of the review and you can have it, I suppose, if you really want it. And he was like, yes. And he has been hounding me for weeks to finish this review because he wants to take this bad boy home. So at the end of this video, I will be emailing Arendelle like, yo, I wanna buy the 1723, send me an invoice. 
and it's going to go to one of my friends. So that doesn't happen too often, guys. I do have friends come over every now and then that do listen to like some of the review gear. And, you know, people have been impressed many times, but like this was like a, he heard it, he saw it, and he's like, I need that in my life. And I do think a lot of people will have a similar experience. Yeah, at this point, I'm just going to start recycling the same things over and over. So I'm going to shut up. We're going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, ask about them in the comment section below. Until next time, later.